Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for the 21st of January, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin here at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. OurShepherd.net is the way to find us. And I'm at the law window today because Paul is writing in Romans chapter 10 to the Romans, and he's talking about the law of righteousness versus the law, well, the law of works, which doesn't work. And so we'll talk about that a little bit as he differentiates between the two and points out that the gospel is for everyone. So let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First, we hear from Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. I like right at the end there where it says, but we rise and stand upright. That reminds me of that time in the service when we all rise and stand together and proclaim our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed or once a year, uh, on Trinity Sunday, the Athanasian Creed. And what it is, is a declaration of war, right? We're, we're standing our ground, we're standing together firmly and speaking to the devil and all his minions and all that he tries to inhabit and all that he tries to, to utilize against us. And we're saying, this is where we stand. This is what we believe. This is who we are. So think about that next time that you're saying the creed in church with your brothers and sisters in Christ, that you are declaring war against Satan and his angels and standing firm in the faith of Jesus Christ. It really is a very stirring moment in our worship service. Okay, Romans 10, beginning at verse 1, and it's subtitled, Israel's Unbelief. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone who believes. So I'll put a little X mark through the, the stone tablets not in any way removing or reducing God's law. But whenever we look at God's law as a way to God, as a way towards righteousness, we fail, right? We fail miserably. The law's primary role is to show us that we fall short, that we are hopeless in and of ourselves, and therefore then to steer us to, gospel, to the gospel, to the only place that we can turn, to God and his mercy and his grace through Jesus Christ. So the law's primary role is to show us that we on our own are completely lost. And of course, once we're saved, once we've received the law of grace, that is the, the law of Christ and his righteousness, then the law, the Ten Commandments, they give us a guide. They show us how we are to live, how we seek to live by God's uh, leading and by the power of his Holy Spirit. So. So anyone looking to the law and saying, yeah, I can keep those commandments and therefore I can be righteous on my own, they've failed already, right? Uh, in, in 1 John it says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Okay, going on. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because 
If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So get some beautiful feet on you and share the, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. All who walk around in this world in our little corners here and there and share the gospel. Paul writes right there, we have beautiful feet, how beautiful they are, who share the good news. And one more thing I want to point out very quickly here. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Amen. Let's do that in our prayers today. We'll confess that it, with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. We'll say that outright and say it, say it out loud right now. Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And therefore, and then you will be saved by the power of the gospel through the faith given you in Jesus Christ. It's just as simple as that. Just as simple as that. Well, let's pray. We're going to pray, um, take my life and let it be. Verse 2, it's a pretty famous hymn. And the hymn of the day as well. I'm sorry, the prayer of the day as well. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. O Lord, grant us the spirit to hear your word and know the one thing needful, <clears throat> that by your word and spirit we may live according to your will. And Lord, bless us by faith given through your Holy Spirit, sanctified by him, so that we can say with our mouths, Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that you raised him from the dead to the glory of God the Father and for our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who is also our Lord and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forever. Amen. And come to church this weekend, Saturday at 6, Sunday at 8.30 and 11. Bible study in between those two on Sunday. Um, would love to see you and, and come and stand together with your brothers and sisters. Stand firmly and declare war on Satan as we speak the creed together. Amen? Amen. Have a great weekend.